Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today I've got in our possession perhaps one of the greatest weapons in all of video game history. I present to you the Master Sword Lego custom design from the builder State Alchemist. This legendary weapon is part of just about every Zelda story and has appeared in many games throughout the decades. Its look does not stray too far between each game iteration, but just for clarity's sake, this is the modern or contemporary interpretation of the Master Sword as seen in Breath of the Wild, Twilight Princess, or Skyward Sword. It's an incredibly striking model, no pun intended, great details along the handle, and takes a commanding presence while on display in our studio. If you want to build one of these for yourself, the instructions can be found at our web store, brickvault.toys. Included with each purchase is the PDF step-by-step -step building guide, a digital parts list for quickly uploading and ordering all the parts you will need. Every single one of our models is built in real life, tested for strength, and the instructions are also tested so they are easy to follow along. I almost forgot to mention this as well. The Master Sword comes in two color combinations. We decided to build ours in blue here in the studio for the handle, but the main handle and hilt also comes in dark blue. Simple matter of preference, both options are open to you. Here are some extra picks to give you guys a better idea of what I'm talking about. There's also a build option included that allows you to mount the sword to a wall, plus this extra little build here that shows the royal crest. Buying instructions is a great way to help support us and the talented people we work with, like State Alchemist, who has also built the great looking Going Merry from One Piece. Click that link in the description below if you'd like to get started, and now let's check out the full-sized Master Sword in LEGO. And I really do mean full-sized. The cross guard is nearly 9 inches, or 22 centimeters meters from end to end and the custom Lego Master Sword reaches 42 inches long or about 106 centimeters in length which according to Google is about the same size or even a little bigger than your average samurai sword or broadsword. So once this is in your hands, I think you've got a fairly good idea of just how big this weapon would probably be if it existed in real life. But let's break down some of the details here. The cross guard has the winged motif. I say winged because it looks like that to me. I don't know if this is like the official interpretation of the shapes here, but you do get that gradual curve inward on the outer edges of the guard, while you can see the angled through line for each end cutting back towards the body, creating a wide flat edge for the wing shape. And then this slightly less sharp angle leads closer into the inside of the guard and it kind of tapers off that full shape. So to me, it outlines a very intentional wing shape, and I think in a couple of the games, this part of the Master Sword actually folds in at first and then spreads open once fully awakened. So anyways, just beneath the winged cross guard is a type of secondary hand guard. It's a smooth, subtle disc shape that feels a bit more functional. My guess is that it serves to keep the hero's hands from gripping too high and too close to the winged guards, which could probably mess with your fighting form if you got too close. Plus, it offers a bit of extra protection for incoming blades that deflect or slide down the flat edge of the Master Sword. The beginnings of this rounded shape are somewhat present in the Ocarina of Time version of the weapon, but truly this independent disc shape for the Master Sword only started appearing in Wind Waker and beyond. After that, we uh, have a slowly tapering hilt with just one plate's degree of gradation, and then at the end, a small round, almost cone-like pommel. This area of the model works very well. It's nice and smooth and consistent, but let's pan back up now because outside of the winged cross guard, the most recognizable or iconic features of the Master Sword are, of course, the embedded symbol of the Triforce, and I'd say also this intentionally blunted thin area of the blade beneath, which I found out only recently is called a Ricasso. 
It's actually a really nice sounding word when you say it out loud, ricasso. Anyways, above the build for the yellow gem, you have a nice area where a bit of the blue wraps and grips the beginning of the ricasso with also some yellow highlights that I perhaps imagine to be gold or brass detailing within the universe. This area could also function as a rain guard, but that's a little hard to tell and I'm not like a sword expert. But moving up, you now get to the fattest part of the blade, which holds the Triforce symbol built out using almost entirely tiled triangle pieces. It's a nicely understated bit of Lego detailing that uses some dark bluish gray just underneath those triangles to let the Triforce pop by just a little bit extra. It's a great look that consistently leads into the incredibly long blade build with that single layer of tiles that gives you the impression that the blade is thinning out along the edges. Now that's all for a nice look at a distance though. You can see while it rests on the horizontal display stand that the sword blade is not thin by any degree. This is at the end of the day a necessity for basic structural integrity. Once you start reaching beyond a certain length in bricks, you have the tendency to want to bend, bow, or break. State Alchemist, the designer, employed a really clever Technic internal structure. I actually got this video here. If you don't complete the model, uh, it works pretty well as a cat toy. And that structure gives you a fairly good degree of wielding motion, but this is by no means something that you can really be swinging around or using to spar with. Now, right now in this shot here, I am pushing the blade at the most extreme one-handed angles that I am personally comfortable attempting. I can feel the blade wobbling through the handle, and I also see some bowing as I do this. I bet it could probably be lowered maybe a little more, but I'm not doing a full stress test here for the video, just letting you know where I think the model stands in terms of overall structure. And the strength of the model still actually has a lot of other attributes that I like a lot. For starters, you can just rest it or plop it on a table, no problem. It can also lean against a wall with the pommel or the tip of the blade on the ground. It really makes no difference. And so far as of the making of this video and recording, I have zero breaks to the build's name, which is great. And lastly, don't let me forget, but uh, there was a wall hanger piece that was designed for mounting as well. It uses the same kind of Technic piece that LEGO created specifically for wall mounting, and if that's the route you want to go, the option is certainly open to you. Now remember, that is BrickVault.toys if you wanted to build a Master Sword for yourself. Please let me know what you guys think about this design from State Alchemist. Of course, in the comments, like always, let me know what types of models you want to see built in the future. If you enjoy our content, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, share. Thank you so much for sticking around to the very end, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.